we'll, we can dive into the back end of my software a little bit if you guys want to at the end. Um, Liz and, and uh, Derek will have a couple other things at the end as well. But uh, I'm just going to go over like the, the bare basics um, and we'll go, from, we'll go from there. So can everybody see my screen, holiday gift card sales? I see it. I think you're doing fine. All right. So basically, these are like the, the five elements that you really need to have to do a gift card to do a gift card sales strategy that's going to be effective. You can post it on Facebook and you can do other things. I promote mine on Facebook as well, but an email list will perform better than just about anything else. So you need an email list, you need some sort of gift card software, uh, a discount you can live with, a CRM or email software, and then an email sequence. And I'm going to go through each one of those things now. So um, an email list, so how are you capturing your emails now? So for me, I'm really still big on capturing emails. So this is the current version of my website. Uh, that form you see on the right-hand side of the page is on every page of my website. And no matter where you move on the website, that form sticks with you. So as you scroll down, that's there. Um, first name, last name, their mobile, their mobile phone number, email and zip code. And I'm getting mobiles because texting is going to become you know, more and more a part of our strategy, but email still is very effective. And I don't know that I'd want to use text messaging for something like this and burn up my goodwill with those text messages for, for something as, you know, as, as marketing focused as this is, um, and it, and not being direct and, and related right to the point of sale when they ask for it. We use texting in the sales process on the front end not on this long-term nurture stuff. So, um, you know, capture emails. If you don't have, if you don't have emails as part of your strategy now, you know, it's never too late to start. Um, we have probably, um, about 18,000 marketable emails in our database, uh, over the last 10 years. So, and that's, you know, with some scrubbing and, you know, people, people leaving from time to time, obviously. So the next thing you need is gift card software. So, these are three that are fairly straightforward and you can get set up um, depending on your level of expertise with technology today. So launch 27, if you're a user, there's a gift card functionality built into the software. Uh, I personally use gift card cafe. Um, I like it. They do take some fees, but um, it helps me manage this as of now. I am uh, hoping maybe someday to build that into my, into my uh, main CRM or the CRM I use uh, or have that built in, but that's, that's a future dream. Uh, and then the last thing you could do is if you have like a WordPress developer, you could use WooCommerce and their gift card plugin uh, to sell and manage plugins. So it's not just about selling the plugins or selling the gift cards. It's about, it's about managing them after the fact, knowing who's, can, who's used them and who's not because you can sell gift cards all day long, but if you don't have a way to track them and, and recognize who has uh, used theirs and who hasn't, then it, it really doesn't matter. Um, create a discount you can live with is kind of my next piece of advice. So uh, many of your gift cards, they're not gonna get redeemed, ever. Um, so as scary as it seems that I would offer 20% off, uh, that a good chunk of those will, will, never be, will never be redeemed. I'm gonna show you some statistics from my back end right now. Um, and the other thing is, don't be afraid to target your current customers. So sure, you'll make a little less on them over the course of a year, but, but very few of them have the, the cash on hand to buy a year's worth of cleanings. Um, a few do, and I have a few clients that look forward to this every year, um, and, they, and they, purchase theirs, they purchase theirs for the year. And you could look at it as, oh, I've lost that revenue. Uh, but, you know, I, I look at it as I've captured it on the front end and I have that available now to do some things with at the end of the year. You know, throw some nice parties for my staff. Um, you know, make sure that, uh, make sure that, you know, we have got good cash on hand for some short weeks and things like that that come up with the holidays. So those are some things. So as you can see, um, these are all, these are all uh, gift cards that are still at full value. So right now, of the 57 gift cards we sold last year, 31 are fully redeemed at this point. So 31 are done. 
but 26 are either partially redeemed or have not been redeemed yet at all. So um, I can live with I can live with this. So uh, my discount that's going to kick in here uh, that's going to start. I guess it technically started today and will run until midnight on uh, Black Friday. It's 20% off. I can live with that knowing the redemption rates that I'm going to see. So that's, that's important to me. Um, the next thing you need to have to make this work is a CRM or, or email software. So um, I don't know for sure that Service Autopilot has this feature yet, but uh, so a lot, of the, a lot of what you guys are using is scheduling software. Um, is starting to have the ability to do targeted emails and things like that. Um, Service Autopilot does this. The software I use called Made Central. I could email directly from it. Um, MailChimp. I still use Infusionsoft because I haven't really fully embraced all the things Made Central can do with, uh, with the email campaigns and things like that. Uh, but a lot of the CRMs are moving to have integrated email marketing built in. But if you don't have this, something like MailChimp or... Uh, constant contact or something more advanced like Infusionsoft would work just fine to do this. And so I, I'm doing mine in Infusionsoft this year. So you, you schedule an email sequence. So I have three emails scheduled for this. So I have one that's going out on Monday. I have one that's going out on Wednesday and I have one that is going out on, on Friday. And it looks like, it looks like I've got the first one scheduled wrong for 1127. Uh -oh. For no show. Or I was sitting on the set of a local TV t station and I was giving these same tips. Which of those carry, if I was giving the exact. <laughs> Thanks, Derek. So, right. um, so I, that actually that 1126, I need to, I need to go into to that and, and change that. So that was a good, Good thing that I ran this today with you guys because I would have missed that. That first email wouldn't have gone out. So my email sequence looks something like this. So, um, you know, different headlines for each one. First one is, you know, boldly promotional, um, basically sharing within the offer. And then each one of those images links back to our uh, to gift card cafe with um, the promo, the promo code being active they'll see the 20% offer. Uh, the second one is a thank you. We send that out on Thanksgiving. Th this one we send out about, um, I think we wait till like 10 in the morning to send it out, assuming people are kind of, you know, probably not checking their email a lot, but we want it to be there throughout the day that they can, that they know they got a thank you from us. And then at the bottom in the PS, we do remind them that we're still running this, this sale. And then, Early on, about 7 a.m. on Friday of Black Friday, we send out a third email, um, and this one drives the most sales. So if you were going to do any of them, you could do it on Black Friday and skip the other two. But I, I find the combination of the three works really well to get my total goals um, for, for gift cards sold uh, to, to a little over – a little over 20,000 in the worst case scenario and my best my best case scenario we did about 25,000 one year um, and then in November total for about 29,000 for the for the month uh, at some 10% gift cards that we did for um, uh, Cyber Monday so uh, really dropped off the deal after that so that's the sequence that we use and it's pretty pretty simple so that's really all there is to it as far as what I do um, for this. There's, there's you know, headlines and copy and things like that that goes into writing, there's, writing these. Uh, there's a little bit of design work. But the thing is, these have not changed. I, I had these designed in 2015. Uh, I wrote the copy in 2015. And I haven't done a thing differently other than just proofread them and check the dates since then. So that's it. Now, you've got the two emails before it and then the Black Friday email. What Do you have any other follow-ups or anything? I thought you had a bigger, more streamed out one. Uh, this, is, this is what I've worked out to. So I just, run it, I just run it for three days. I run three emails now. This is what I've kind of figured out works really well. I used to do five emails, um, did it every day of the week, and we've just kind of streamlined it back to, um, to this. And so for last year... For last year, for gift certificates, 
let's see. Go to, we can go to, this is the back end of, um, just if I get the this gift is card the cafe. of a gift card cafe, right? And <coughs> so you can kind of check your stats and things like that, but I could look at it day by day and like, and actually search like what date, what date performed the best and most. You, could, you can look historical data. I'm just going to look at November. I'm just going to look at November of 2017 to see how we did. And this number, it's, I think it's blocked by this. So this number here, 25,162, is, is the actual cash we collected, um, not the total value of the gift card. So I'd have to look elsewhere to find that. So we, we collected $25,000 in revenue in sales. So um, back that out, about $30,000. For that month's um, for that month's gift card sales. And what about do you uh, have any uh, in December from all this? I know you said that's just your November goal. Oh sure. So yeah. So for gift cards for December, I didn't really think about that. I thought we were just thinking Black Friday. Yeah, we still we still push uh, gift card sales. So but it, it declines. We just go down to a ten percent discount, and then we do send out a couple more emails in December. Um, I'd have to go into Infusionsoft to see what we've done. But the, the, the goal is really to get most of your sales over this Black Friday weekend to really, to really boost your cash on hand uh, for, for the end of the year. That's, that's always been my goal. Um, you'll, sell, you'll still sell some last minute gift cards for Christmas and things like that. But this has always been, um, it's always been more about uh, this Black Friday sequence. So, I think I was a little shorter than Derek anticipated on, on this, but we can dig into uh, metrics or anything else, give, you know, questions, things like that. About no, that's, it. that's fine. I, I love that you streamlined it. I remember you used to have a lot more emails in the sequence. So it's interesting that you've been able to stream it down to just the mandatory ones that are actually generating the money. And then I think you said you did, did another five to 10 in December normally just from people yeah, so, procrastinated so or. Yeah, so in December, if we look at if we look at December's numbers for last year, it's going to be a pretty good drop off. We might do. Let's see. Let's look at uh, December. December of twenty seventeen. See what we come up with as far as sales. So we did another four thousand in December. It's still it's still significant, but. Um, Nothing, nothing to the level that we see, and that's after discounts. So probably ten percent more than that. So probably forty five hundred dollars in in actual val like retail value. Um, so that that's significant. But I would I would say that your big push for this needs to be, and this is you know seems really last minute now because we're talking about it a week before. But you still have time to do this. You don't have to make them as pretty as mine. You could you could you know, get a few, uh, get a few um, images on there if you need to, but really just get something out there um, for that Thanksgiving sequence where people are out there thinking about what they need to buy people. And, and then um, a lot of your current customers are going to buy this for gifts for, for their friends. And some of your current customers are going to pre-buy their service for the next year. That's not as big a deal as you would think. Um, but if you're afraid, if you're afraid of that, or you don't want to do that. Make your discount smaller, but just bear in mind that you will not sell the quantity that you would otherwise. Um, I, I just don't worry about it because I know that enough of them don't get redeemed. That I just I, it, it makes its it makes its way into my pocket either way. Right. So you said you had seventy percent redemption, and then the yep. other thing that's important on this is you. Uh, don't do anything. They just go to gift card cafe. They just buy this. So you come in on Monday and sold thirty thousand dollars over the weekend, basically. That's pretty much it. I mean, I, I just basically watch it each day as they kind of roll in. Um, I remember one year. So I usually go leave St. Louis on. Um, I usually leave St. Louis either Thanksgiving night, uh, head down to Branson, or the you know the day after on uh, on Black Friday, and um, 
Yeah, usually while we're driving down, my wife's watching the emails and she's like, all right, just another one. There's another one. And uh, I love to watch like the credit card settlement that night, like on Black Friday, you know, just a day where no work actually happened. And let's, let's actually look at it. Let's look at what Black Friday would have been last year. So, um, so November, I should actually go to the actual date. So it's the 4th November and 4th Thursday in November. So the 23rd of last year to the 23rd of last year. And I, yeah, just that, that settlement report as it goes into your credit cards. Let's see, no 11.23. Hmm. What happened there? Is that, oh, that wasn't Black Friday, that was Thursday. November 2017. Sorry, guys. Okay. I see we have a chat question coming in while it's gone. Uh, they're saying 24th. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Let's see what, let's see what that day was. So at that day, you know, that day alone, almost $16,000 hit my bank account and we didn't, we didn't work. And if you look, I mean, a ton of these, a lot of these smaller ones just never got redeemed. Full value, full value, full value, um, full value. These have never been these have never been redeemed yet. So four hundred and eighty dollars never redeemed. Um, One hundred and sixty dollars never redeemed. So there's a lot of money. There's a lot of money people spent. Uh, I, you know, if I add it up, it probably it probably is that twenty percent back, but just never got redeemed. Now, how do you actually redeem these? What do you have to do when you come in and people use these? Because you feel like you said, got this to kind of a streamlined system at this point. Yeah, so we, we just put in Made Central in our, in our CRM or our previous CRM, we just put a, a payment line that was gift card, right? So you apply that payment. And then there is a secondary step that you have to do where you would come in, where you'd come into your, um, where you would come into your uh, system and you would, let's see, you come in here and redeem uh, these certificates. You can do it, you can do it by text message or your, st your staff can just text a code, uh, the, the gift card certificate, or you can come in here and search their account like this person and you could redeem, redeem the value that's left. So, um, so we would just, redeem whatever value was for the cleaning. So you have to do this either, you know, um, visit by visit. And that, that's the way we like to do it instead of redeeming it in advance and applying it across their account. Because what if they cancel service and they never actually do redeem it or they move or something like that? We want to redeem it each, each time as it happens. So it just has to be a habit of whoever does your bookkeeping to go in and redeem these. Um, I know Launch27 does it like a promo code. And I'm not quite sure how that would work. Um, but if you did the WooCommerce, it would be like kind of the same thing. You'd come into the back end of the software and, and redeem it. So it's a little extra work to track and manage, but the software makes it, the software makes it possible. That's what you're paying for with them and what their little cut is, is that they make it easy to, to track this, um, to, to follow up with it. Cause you could go the cheap route and just, you know, have people email, email you and do it. But to be honest, if there's like a shopping cart and they can use their card and do it all, you want to make it as simple as possible. And, you know, while I hate giving up even a little bit more percent, I think they take, I want to say they take 2% more on top of it, depending on what plan you have with them. Um, you know, I, I think that's, I think that's reasonable considering what, gift cards do for me so well like you said if they're using some of the platforms like launch 27 they get it for free already so do right. me a favor can you pull your emails up again because we kind of hit that a little earlier on and um let me I let me show you the actual emails i actually i emailed them to myself in advance so we'd have them a little bit uh bigger to look at here so and i need to so the first one that goes out is it, it's customized to their name. Matt, check out our best deal of the year. 
and it has, ooh, I need to, yeah, I have an expiring gift card on there. So I need to, to so that first email needs to get double checked. Um, this is kind of the copy that we use. Um, it's nothing exceptional. You can do it in whatever voice you want. The main thing is they know right off the top of the email that there is a gift card, gift card sale, and it's clickable to get them to the gift cards. So this takes them to the, to the shopping cart and they can get right there. So this is the first one that we do. Um, let the, let the shopping cart load and then I'll show you the second email in the sequence. And when does that one go out? That one's going to go out Monday of, of the week of Thanksgiving. So we kind of do like black Friday starting early, getting them thinking about it and knowing that, that we have this offer. Um, so we don't have any live discounts right now. So this, the, that other deal will go live on the 19th. So if they bought anything right now, it would be at full price. So they'll go back. Uh, then the next one we do goes out on Thanksgiving day. So this is one we've been using for like a decade. This thank you, thank you times a million, thank you. We've sent this email on Thanksgiving every day for a decade. I mean, pretty much the same image, the same copy, but it's a year later, right? And so maybe sometimes we might change it up, but really it's, once you build this, once you build this um, library of emails and content, you can use it over. So it's just a thank you email to our, to our clients. Um, you know, that's all it really is. But then, hey, there's this PS right and they can click on it and buy gift cards so this one doesn't kill but you get a few extra little sales on there so you'll tack on a few extra sales that day and then the final email is black friday time is running out if you could do a timer in this email it would be even better and i probably I probably would recommend um, there's some timer softwares where you just Google like um, email timer software and you could, you could embed that in the email, maybe change the header out from just an image like this to have a, a counter counting down uh, to midnight. Basically there's all kinds of stuff like that that's available and that might be like a nice little way to, to do this email and this one goes out on Black Friday pretty early. You want this one to go out. Uh, you want this one to hit their inbox, maybe while they're out there in line to buy something stupid and they're just waiting in there before the store's open. You can have, I mean, I don't even know if that's a thing anymore because the stores stay, stay open 24 hours a day. Isn't that right? Like, I haven't done that ever, so I don't know. Um, but the... Well, like, that's hard Black Friday person, yeah. It starts Thursday at 6 now, but yeah. Yeah, so... So yeah, unfortunately, like the, the, the logic behind it was you could send it out at four in the morning and they might be standing in a line waiting to get into Best Buy and buying a TV. And they're like, oh crap, I can do this while I wait. Uh, you still want it to go, out, to go out early and they have all day to look at it and find it and it's in their inbox. Um, I used to send out two emails on Friday. Um, like Derek said, we, we had this down to a pretty good sequence. And uh, I still found that the sales were pretty much the same on Friday, whether I sent one or sent to. Hmm. So, so that's, that's, really, it, that's really it. Not you've super got, complicated. You've got it down to a sequence of three emails. It's almost all exclusively three emails. Like you said, you've experimented with Facebook and stuff and it doesn't seem like that gave, gave you a big bang for the buck. Um, yep. How many people are on your email list? So this, this email will go out to um, about 18,000 contacts, so 18,666 right now. So, you know, for a promotional email, your, your, your response rate or your open rate is going to be low, like, you know, maybe 10, 15, 20% at the most. You know, if you're used to sending out emails to your clients and you're getting 50% response rates, you're not going to see that. Like, we just did a 72-hour sale the other day to fill some spots. We sold out um, on a $25 coupon. We sold out through the end of November. We had like 56 one-time sales and 15 recurring sales 
on one email. So, you know, a big, a big list is important, but if you don't have a big list, you know, extrapolate your numbers and figure out what you could probably, you know, squeeze out of your list. And that's, it gives you something to like, you know, basically gives you a reason to, to be collecting emails on your website every time uh, that you have a visitor, give them something that they do. The thing that we give our, we, the thing we give our visitors every single time is we give them uh, their pricing instantly. So there's, you know, there is a, a value piece that we're, that we're giving them uh, to collect their information. So that, as long as that still works, I'm going to still try and keep collecting emails on the front. So basically, uh, you, I, I was doing the math, they're generating about a dollar sixty-five to a dollar seventy for every single person on your email list. Sure, I'll, I'll live with that. Yeah. So that, that and that's actually a probably, you, you know, um, so yeah, if you look at it, if you look at the gift card sales value, and then. Um, I, I look at it also when I look at the value of, um, of what we can push with like recurring sales and things like that. I think an email is worth closer to $10 per, per email with what you can do uh, over the course of a year. So if you grow a big email list, you can generate a lot of extra money from it. Probably, you know, I, I think I can generate almost an extra $200,000 in sales um, through promotions through my email list throughout the course of the year. Oh, I agree. I mean, just this one thing was a buck sixty. So right. a list of eighteen thousand sounds scary, and a lot of people don't have that. But even smaller companies, I remember when we were at half a million in sales, we still had three thousand people on my list. That would be five thousand dollars following this strategy. Yeah, yeah. So you're not you may not hit twenty or thirty thousand dollars doing this, but it's it's a reason to keep doing this. So I've been doing this, I've been doing this email, the same promotion, almost the exact way. Um, for about, I would say almost a half dozen years now, six years. And so 2015, we really refined it. And that was probably one of our best years. And, uh, and then it's been kind of steadily, steadily moving up from there as our list has grown. So yeah, you know, I, I would think if you did $2,000, if you did $5,000, it's money in your pocket, uh, for the holidays, throw your staff a Christmas party with the money, put some of it aside in savings for a rainy day. Uh, you don't want to spend all this money because it's a liability, but some of it, some of it I would, I, you know, tr I'm going to treat myself to a, new, to a new bike or something like that. I don't know, whatever. So uh, my wife's not listening, so she doesn't know that, but there's, you know, there's a million things that you need this time of year. So a little extra cash on hand and a little bit of extra cushion uh, for, for some snow days like I'm having in St. Louis is always a good thing. All right, so we had some questions come in. I want to run through real quick. So you've got these gift cards up on your site all year long, right? I do. Do you do much on any of the other days? Do you get much for Mother's Day or Valentine's Day or is Christmas the big kahuna? Yeah, you know, we do some, yeah, I'll show you a couple other examples of what we do for, um, for some other days. Those are good questions. So let me go to some emails and I'll show you what we, what we do for some other days. We do, Valentine's Day does okay for us. Um, maybe like a thousand bucks. I mean, nothing, nothing like what we see. Um, nothing like what we see for, um, for this, for this particular sequence. But, um, and, and again, not all of my ideas are completely original. Some of these I've seen other people do. Why am I? just keeps stalling on this screen. Um, ah, here we go, there we go, search. Okay, so for Valentine's Day, let's see what this one looks like. So we might do 10% off, so this, uh, I'll give credit to Joanna Palumbo, I believe, uh, I think she, uh, shared this image with me in a group and I was like, Oh, I'm going to do this. And, uh, I'm going to find the same image and I'm going to do this. And I, I, I doubt that it was her original idea. You know, no ideas are original guys. So if you see something that I'm doing, I don't, I don't take ownership of, of any of the ideas that are, that I'm doing. I think that I probably saw it someplace else. And I was like, I'm going to execute on this. Like I'm not, so I'm not the most creative person in the world. I am, but I'm a really good ex. I'm really good at executing. I see an idea, I make it my own, 
and I execute on it. And I think that's the lesson here is that you don't have to like recreate the wheel here. There's some, some basic things. So, you know, we might do a thousand dollars off of a, off of a Valentine's day campaign. And then I'll see if I have something for mother's day real quick. Um, this is probably, well, that's Thanksgiving. Let's see if we did one for Christmas. Well, in the meantime, there was another question that came in about do the uh, gift certificates have an expiration date? You do have to be careful because there's a lot of laws around that. Some of them are on the state level. Like in Ohio, I cannot put an expiration date on a gift card. I have to basically do it forever. Yeah, so if you were to switch gift card systems, you'd have to export all of your unredeemed stuff out. I don't put an expiration date on it because what's the difference? My prices go up. So the value, like as long as you don't do it based on hours of cleaning or something like that, if you do it on a dollar, if you do it on a dollar value, the value of the dollar compared to your service declines over time. So, you know, if somebody doesn't redeem it for five years, uh, you know, your service that was $200 five years ago might be $350 in five years. The way, the way things are going right now might be the case for sure. That, that, uh, that that's the case. So I, I don't worry about that. You could do five years, I believe, uh, but you need to check your state laws. Federally, I think, I think gift cards can go and can expire in five years, but uh, on a state by state basis, some states do not allow you to do that. So you need to check your state laws and then double check that federal law. I'm not a, I'm not a lawyer, so I don't make mine expire. And Joanne, I want to thank you for uh, recognizing her, giving her a quick shout out there. Um, <laughs> and uh, Sarah had a quick question as well. Do you have a lot of problem with people wanting to redeem it maybe for Christmas and then you can't get them in? Yeah, that's, you know, that's, that's uh, going to be an issue. Some people are thinking that they're going to get a Christmas cleaning, but our, I mean, our Christmas, our Christmas schedule is fairly full at this point, but the, the thing is the gift card is sold at that point. Um, and I just tell them like, look, the software doesn't allow us to, to go back in and, and, and to do that. We've already paid fees on the credit card processing. Um, we can get you in after the holidays, you know, the, but a pre-holiday cleaning is, is not, is not gonna, my, my schedule for, for Christmas week is full. And so uh, any, any reasonable people aren't gonna, aren't gonna have that issue. But you know, what I always find is guys, like if you have like one bad experience, you feel like that's the, that's the norm. Chances are, like, once you have enough data points, you're going to find out that that's an exception, and it, and it soured you to an experience, but it's not the norm. So I would say that we have had that experience, but it is such a small thing that I don't worry about it. And I'm not the one doing sales anymore, so I'm not the one that has to face that. So, um, you know, so I don't, you know, I, I guess I'm, I'm putting the problem off to one of my frontline employees, but, or one of my frontline salespeople, but I, I don't worry about it. I, I get the sale, and it doesn't seem to be a big enough problem. And, and honestly, I would give them their money back if it, if it really was going to sour them on the relationship that much. But most people are understanding. Yeah, I, I agree too. I think people get hung up on the one-time event. Um, I'm trying to share my screen. Do you see it, Matt? Uh, let me... Or do you have to give up control first? I'm probably going to have to stop share. Let me see. Uh, okay. Stop share. And cool. I think I got you now. There you go. All right. So um, the reason why I popped this up real quick is I promised people we would be done in 30 minutes and I'll stay on and answer some more questions. Um, but we do the, we're doing these calls once a week and they're normally invite only. We decided to open this up because it's a topic that everyone gets kind of excited about. Um, if you go to our website, Cleaning Business Builders and hit on contact, there is a contact form in there. Um, if you fill that out, we send you a self-assessment for your business, which is designed for you just to kind of figure out what areas of your business you want to work on. Um, but if you send that back to us, we will use that as a way to figure out uh, what webinars maybe we might want to invite you on in the future. Um, Matt actually mentioned a couple things on here that made me go, oh yeah, that's a topic I need to cover. And there's a couple other topics I need to cover. Um, so if you thought that self-assessment, will give us an idea. So just go to cleaning business builders, hit the contact, fill it out, and we'll invite you to some of these future webinars as well. And I'm going to check, like I guess that I'm just trying to stick to my promise of saying I would keep it to half an hour. Um, I had a couple other questions coming in about, could you limit, uh, make the coupon only good for like April through May of the year or something like that. Uh, Sarah had that come in. Um, once again, you got to check with the legal stuff in your area here in my town. Like Matt said, there's not a lot of original ideas, but a lot of the restaurants here do a promotion where when you buy a hundred dollar gift certificate, you get a $20 coupon. 
And here, those $20 coupons are good for January, February, March only. So their workaround is you're buying a $120 gift certificate, getting a gift certificate, and they're kicking in a $20 coupon. Yeah, so that's, that's, a good idea. that's a good idea, Derek. The software lets you do a BOGO. So you could, you could do for every $100 you buy, you could get a BOGO certificate for $20. If I, and if I were to do anything with the BOGO certificates, I wouldn't limit them for a time of year, but I might limit them to like only be used on Monday through Wednesday cleanings or something like that. I mean, we all have excess capacity on Mondays and Tuesdays. I, I know that every single week we're working hard to sell out Monday where Fridays and Thursdays, they're already pretty well sold. So maybe something like that if you wanted to do. I like Derek's idea of a BOGO though. Yeah, I've noticed a lot of the local restaurants do that. I think that gets them around some of the laws because you're still getting your $100 gift certificate, but you're getting a $20 bonus. Um, the plan that we're going to implement at Castle Keepers is we're going to do a 20% bonus, but it must be used on a separate cleaning. So the idea is we're hoping to get two cleans out of it. Um, we're hoping to get uh, the one-time clean, but then have them come back and use that $30 or $50 for a follow-up clean. And as you know, once you get somebody in a habit, it's awful hard to break the habit. Yeah. Yeah. That's why, um, yeah. And you know, off topic a little bit, but that's why like, um, some people like to do discounts on the first 10 cleanings or things like that, or the first five cleanings. Once somebody does this for five or 10 times, so that's a good idea. Getting, trying to get a multiple, trying to get a mul multiple, um, you know, sales process. Uh, so gift card cafe lets you do, uh, discounts like that where it, where it can be a bonus certificate. So you can look at the back end of that, play around with it a little bit. Okay, great. Well, I don't see too many more questions. Um, I am recording this, so I've had a couple people up. Oh, Tether saying she's coming with a question. Um, I I am recording this because I had a couple people say they missed the beginning, so I will post this later on. Uh, but if you've got any follow up questions, uh, yeah. let us know. Matt's always pretty open, as am I. Yeah, and uh, if you guys are, to, 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 if there's a, is there is this in, in an open group that we could continue the conversation on Facebook? Uh, yeah, if we want to take it to uh, the Your Cleaning Business Today group, we'll be good in there. Yeah, if anybody wants to answer any other questions, uh, that would be fine. And then just, just, or just tag me in a post if you're on Quality Driven or the other, the other sites. If you're not on that one, just, just tag me if you have any other questions. Um, Derek has the link to that screen share that I did. It's all, again, it's all basic stuff, guys. It's just, it's just execution. This is not this is not a complicated business. You don't need, you know, you don't need to do anything other than execute well and, and be consistent. So this is just something that if you keep doing year after year, you'll see results on. Like if you do this this year and you're like, oh, this didn't work for me. Yeah, I mean, there's a million things we start and stop in this business that we all say that it doesn't work. I always, I always look at myself when I do that and be like, what did I not execute on? You know, what could we do? What could we do better next year? This works. All the big players in, you know, restaurants, hospitality, they're all doing gift cards and it, you know, it, it can work for you. So just give it time. And uh, like I tell people all the time, a lot of times it's the baking soda. I think having the cojones to go for the 20% off offer makes a world of difference as you see with the 10%, you know, what, and look around in the industry. I've noticed that the restaurants in our industry all when, are all doing 20 to 25 percent sometimes they're doing them as coupons but they're doing pretty good size yeah i, I agree i think you you know you're, you're trying to get and especially the people that have never used you before you're trying to give them a reason to, to, to take that chance and yeah you're going to sell some to your ex existing customers and some of you are going to feel like that hurts a little bit i get it um i thought that way myself at first too but i just i just look at the numbers and i live with i live with the facts knowing what what I've seen over the years, it, it all pays itself back. So just go for it. And, you know, I think you'll be surprised and happy with, with how it turns out. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. Like I said, we went a little over to answer some questions, but I tried to keep this short. Um, fill out that form on uh, cleaningbusinessbuilders.com and then contact us if you want us to invite you to some more of these that we normally have as private. And uh, thanks always, Matt, for sharing. All right. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Bye. Bye. Yeah.